the force that this young lady applies on the lawnmower acts in both the horizontal and vertical directions. When solving problems, physicists often find it useful to break down a single force into two or more vectors. For instance, a physicist would break down the force shown here to find out how much of her force acts vertically and how much of her force acts horizontally. The process of breaking down a single vector into two or more vectors is called the resolution of forces or finding an applied force's horizontal and vertical components. For example, if a physicist wanted to find the force that is moving the lawnmower, he or she would have to find the horizontal component of the mower's applied force. The vertical component of the mower's force has no effect on the lawnmower's motion. Changing the angle of the lawnmower's force will change both the vertical and horizontal components. The larger the vertical component of a force, the smaller the horizontal component of that force and, and vice versa. The black force shown in this animation starts out as a purely horizontal force. As the angle increases, the vertical component increases, and of course, the horizontal component decreases. Notice when the angle decreases, the horizontal component increases, and the vertical component decreases. This video will show you how to draw the horizontal and vertical components of a force. You begin by using a dotted line to create a right triangle that has the applied force as the hypotenuse. The two components point in the same direction of the force. A force that points up and to the right would have an up component and a right component. A force that points down and to the right would have a down component and a right component. Imagine you were asked to draw the horizontal and vertical components of the applied force on the car. First, you would need to draw a horizontal dotted line through the base of the force vector. The next step is to draw the vertical component from the dotted line to the tip of the arrow. Since the applied force points up, the vertical component does too. Make sure that the vertical component makes a 90 degree angle to the dotted line and has an arrow and a label. FY is a typical label for the vertical component. You should always draw the horizontal component last. Since the applied force points to the right, the horizontal component also points in that direction. It must contain an arrow and a label. FX is a typical label for the horizontal component. Which component of the applied force is actually moving this card? Since the card is only moving in the horizontal direction, only the horizontal component is moving the card. Draw the vertical and horizontal components of this force. Just like last time, we are going to find the components by turning this picture into a right triangle. The first step is to draw a flat dotted line at the origin of the vector. Step two is to draw the vertical component of the vector. Since the vector points down, so does the vertical component. In step three, we draw the horizontal component. Since the applied force points to the left, the horizontal force also points to the left. Let's see how the angle of a vector affects its components. The black arrow shown here is the applied force and the two other forces are the components. When the angle of the applied force increases, what happens to the size or magnitude of the vertical and horizontal components? If the angle was increased, how would it change the size of the vertical component and the horizontal component. When the angle increases, it applies more of its force in the vertical direction and less of its force in the horizontal direction. 
Therefore, the vertical component of the applied force increases and the horizontal component decreases. The weight force on a car is 80 newtons. What is the vertical component of this force? Since the weight force is completely vertical, it has no vertical component. What is the vertical component of the car's weight force? Since the weight force only acts in the vertical direction, its vertical component is 80 newtons. A 50 newton force at an angle of 80 degrees has its angle changed to 10 degrees. How will the vertical and horizontal components change? When the applied force goes from a very vertical angle of like 80 degrees to a very horizontal angle like 10 degrees, the vertical component of the applied force will decrease and the horizontal component will increase. Rank the vertical components from least to greatest. The rules for finding components apply to all vectors. Four objects are fired with the same velocity but at four different angles. Rank the vertical velocities from least to greatest. The least vertical component would be found in the velocities that, that is fired at the smallest angle and the greatest vertical velocity would be found in the vector with the largest angle. In this lesson, you've learned that physicists find it very useful to resolve an applied force into its horizontal and vertical components. In order to draw the horizontal and vertical components of an applied force, you can turn a vector into a right triangle whose hypotenuse is the applied force. You also learned that the larger the angle an applied force, the larger the vertical component, and the smaller the horizontal component. This is the end of my presentation on finding the, the components of a force vector.